actions marked a before and after in the history of the United States. A man whose name, though perhaps not as well known as others, leaves a scar on the history of violence in America. This is Aaron Alexis, a former United States Navy civilian contractor, born in Queens, New York. His life, in many ways, seemed to be that of an average citizen, with his struggles, hopes, and dreams. But on September 16, 2013, Alexis would emerge from the darkness to carry out a terrifying act of violence that left the nation in shock. On that fateful day, Alexis became the perpetrator of one of the deadliest shootings at a military installation in United States history, killing 12 innocent people and wounding many more at the Washington Navy Yard. But who was Aaron Alexis really? How could a man, once sworn to protect the country from him, commit such a horrible act? What led him down this dark path? Join us as we explore the disturbing story of Aaron Alexis, the man behind the Washington Navy Yard tragedy. Today, our focus turns to one of the most heartbreaking tragedies in recent American history. An act of unimaginable violence that shook the nation and left 12 families in mourning. We're talking about the Washington Navy Yard Massacre, and the man behind it, Aaron Alexis. Born on May 9, 1979, Aaron Alexis seemed like a man like any other. No one could have foreseen the darkness that he harbored inside of him and that he would unleash on September 16, 2013. That day, Alexis walked into the Washington, D.C. Navy Yard, armed with a 12-gauge Remington 870 Express shotgun. In the blink of an eye, this everyday workplace became the scene of a nightmare. Michael Arnold, 59, Martin Bodrog, 53, Arthur Daniels, 51, Sylvia Frazier, 53, Kathy Gard, 62, John Roger Johnson, 73, Mary Frances Knight, 51, Frank Kohler, 50, Vishnu Pundit, 61, Kenneth Bernard Proctor, 46, Gerald Reed, 58 and Richard Michael Ridgel, 52. These are the names we should not forget. Each one of them, a victim of this tragedy, had a life, a story, and loved ones who missed them. The lives of these 12 people ended abruptly at the hands of Aaron Alexis. But why? What was it that led Alexis to perpetrate such an act of violence? Was there some sign, some warning that we missed? The massacre that day ended with the death of Alexis in a confrontation with the police. But the repercussions of his actions are still being felt today. In today's episode, we'll explore the life of Aaron Alexis, seeking to understand what may have led to this horrific tragedy. The morning of September 16, 2013 began like any other in Washington, D.C., but it would soon become one of the darkest days in the history of United States military installations. That day, a naval command, the Washington Navy Yard, became the scene of a mass shooting that shook the country and the world. The protagonist of this tragedy was Aaron Alexis, a 34-year-old man who worked as a subcontractor for Hewlett Packard. Upon his arrival in the Washington, D.C. area in late August 2013, Alexis stayed at various hotels. On the day of the massacre, he had been living with five other civilian contractors in a residence in hotel in southwestern Washington since September 7. Two days before the shooting, Alexis visited a gun store in Lorton, Virginia, where he tried out an AR-15 semi-automatic rifle. He did not try to buy it, but he did acquire a 12-gauge Remington 870 Express shotgun and two boxes of bullets after passing a federal and state background check. On Monday, September 16, Alexis arrived at the Navy Yard in a rented Toyota Prius. He had a valid pass and entered the 197 building with the disassembled shotgun in a bag over his shoulder. In a fourth-floor bathroom, he cocked the shotgun and began shooting at 8.16 a.m. The firefight lasted for an hour, killing 12 people and injuring three more. The attack culminated in the death of Alexis, shot down by police around 9.20 a.m. Aaron Alexis, who was born in New York City and raised in Brooklyn, 
had joined the United States Army in 2007 and was discharged in 2011. His past included several episodes of misconduct and at least three arrests for violence. But what drove Aaron Alexis to commit this heinous act? What was hiding behind his actions? And, more importantly, could this tragedy have been prevented? In our next episode, we'll delve into the life of Aaron Alexis and the circumstances that led him to become the protagonist of one of the darkest days in American history. Aaron Alexis was known for being reclusive and enigmatic, with a past darkened by violent episodes. Who was this man who, on the fateful September 16, 2013, carried out one of the deadliest shootings in the history of military installations? From United States Born and raised in New York, Alexis had a history of military service, having served in the Navy Reserves in Fort Worth, Texas between 2007 and 2011. However, his military career was far from exemplary. In fact, he was discharged from the Navy in January 2011 for a series of disciplinary infractions, including an incident in which he fired a gun inside his apartment. Despite this fact, Alexis managed to get a job as a computer technician for the experts, a Hewlett Packard subcontractor. The days that preceded the massacre reveal an apparently normal Aaron Alexis, carrying out daily activities. He came to Washington DC around August 25th and stayed at various hotels before settling in at the Southwest Washington Residence in on September 7th. Here he lived with five other civilian contractors until the day of the shooting. On September 14th, two days before the tragedy, Alexis visited a gun store in Lorton, Virginia, where he tried out an AR-15 semi-automatic rifle. He did not attempt to purchase the rifle, but did purchase a 12-gauge Remington 870 Express shotgun and two boxes of bullets after passing a background check. On the day of the shooting, Alexis arrived at the military installation aboard a rented Toyota Prius, carrying a valid pass. He carried the disassembled shotgun in a bag, which he assembled in a bathroom on the fourth floor of the 197 Navy Yard building. With brutal precision, Alexis unleashed his fury, shooting many of the people on the fourth floor at close range and in the head. This grisly scenario went on for four minutes, during which time Alexis also fired shots on the third floor and in the lobby of the building. The police response was immediate. Just seven minutes after receiving the first 911 calls, police units entered the building. One officer, Scott Williams, was shot in the leg during the confrontation. Alexis continued to fire at officers until, at 9.25 a.m. He was fatally shot in the head by Dorian DeSantis, an officer with the D.C. Police Emergency Response Team. The balance of the massacre was devastating, 13 dead, including Alexis. The victims were all civilian employees or contractors, and their ages ranged from 46 to 73 years. In addition, there were eight people injured, three of them by firearms. Aaron Alexis's life, marked by episodes of violence and misconduct, culminated in an act of horror that left an indelible mark on American history. What factors triggered this tragedy? Could it have been prevented? Were there flaws in the security systems that allowed Alexis to perpetrate this heinous act? In upcoming segments, we'll further explore Aaron Alexis's life, his personal history, and his military career, seeking answers to these and other questions. We will seek to understand the circumstances that led this man to become a mass murderer and the lessons we can learn from this tragedy. What do we know about the past of Aaron Alexis? the man behind the Washington Navy Yard massacre. How did a seemingly ordinary individual, a worker, a fellow worker, become a mass murderer? Born in Queens, raised in Brooklyn, Alexis bore the mark of the big city. His history is full of dark and controversial episodes. During his time in the Navy, Alexis was cited on at least eight occasions for misconduct. But were these early signs of the violence to come? In 2010, he was arrested in Fort Worth for discharging a weapon within the city limits. 
In 2004, in Seattle, he was arrested for malicious damage, after shooting at the tires of another man's vehicle in a blackout of anger. Despite his numerous run-ins with the law, he was never prosecuted. Alexis also had a history of mental health problems, his father claiming that he suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, which caused him temper issues. These mental health problems were partly attributed to his involvement in the rescue efforts after the 9-11 attacks. In the months leading up to the shooting, Alexis worked in Japan on the Navy Marine Corps Intranet computer systems refresher. Upon returning from Japan, Alexis expressed frustration to a former roommate, complaining that he had not been paid properly for his work. This frustration and apparent sense of injustice may have fueled his growing anger. Despite his turbulent history, Alexis maintained certain facets of normality. He was a student at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, where he was working toward a bachelor's degree in aeronautics. He also practiced Buddhism, a religion that traditionally advocates peace and non-violence. On the day of the shooting, Alexis arrived at the Navy Yard armed and ready to cause damage. But what drove this man to this extreme act of violence? Was it the result of pent-up frustration, untreated mental health issues, feelings of isolation and discrimination? In our search for answers, we must also look at the system failures that allowed this troublesome man to gain access to firearms and a high-security military facility. How was Alexis able to obtain a valid pass to the Navy Yard? How could he buy a shotgun despite his history of trouble with the law? These are uncomfortable questions, but necessary. The Washington Navy Yard tragedy reminds us that violence can emerge in the most unexpected places, from the most unexpected people. As we search for answers, we hope that we can learn from this tragedy and prevent future acts of violence. We will continue to explore this topic in the next segment, taking a deeper look at the psychological profile of Aaron Alexis, societal responses, and lessons learned from this tragic event. Delving into the psychological profile of Aaron Alexis is challenging, especially since the traits and actions he exhibited seem to contradict each other. On the surface, Alexis was a seemingly calm man, a university student who followed Buddhism and worked in the fields. Of aeronautics however, under this facade, patterns of violent and aggressive behavior were hidden. It is important to note that, according to his father, Alexis suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder, which was attributed to his participation in the rescue efforts after the 9-11 attacks. PTSD can have a wide range of psychological effects, and in some cases it can lead to episodes of anger and violence. However, not all PTSD sufferers become violent bullies, so this fact alone cannot fully explain his actions. In addition, we must consider the impact of discrimination on his life. A roommate of Alexis's said he often complained about being discriminated against. The constant feeling of being treated unfairly can lead to feelings of frustration and resentment, which if not handled properly, can manifest in destructive ways. Alexis's frustration was also exacerbated when he felt he had not been properly paid for the work he did in Japan. These kinds of experiences can fuel a perception of injustice and potentially drive extreme action. We cannot ignore the flaws in the security system that allowed Alexis to gain access to weapons and enter a high-security military installation. Despite his history of trouble with the law, Alexis was able to purchase a shotgun and obtain a valid pass into the Navy Yard. This is a sign of a much bigger problem, where background checks and security measures were not enough to prevent this tragedy. The Washington Navy Yard massacre forces us to face difficult questions about mental health, safety, and society's responsibilities to those who show signs of struggle and violence. As we continue to unravel the life and actions of Aaron Alexis, we hope that we can learn from this tragedy and help prevent similar acts of violence in the future. In our next segment, we will explore societal responses and lessons learned from this event. We will seek to understand how we can prevent future tragedies and how we can support those struggling with mental health issues and the scars of discrimination. 
The Washington Navy Yard massacre came as a shock to the nation and raised a number of difficult questions about how it happened and how we might prevent such tragedies in the future. With the review of Aaron Alexis's actions, society was forced to confront the reality of failures in security in mental health management. Following the massacre, a thorough review of security procedures at military installations and at the contractor companies that work with them was carried out. The fact that Alexis, despite her history of violent behavior and his arrests, had access to a high-security military facility highlighted the need for deeper and more rigorous background checks on employees and contractors. In addition, the case of Alexis highlighted the problems in the management of mental health in the country. Despite suffering from PTSD, Alexis did not receive adequate support and treatment for his condition. This tragedy served as a heartbreaking reminder that mental health must be a priority, and that we must do more to recognize and treat those who are struggling with mental health issues. However, learning from this tragedy is not just a matter of improving safety and mental health care. We also need to reflect on how we handle discrimination and injustice. Alexis frequently expressed his frustration at feeling discriminated against. While this does not excuse his actions, he does raise questions about how discrimination and injustice can fuel anger and frustration. Furthermore, in the case of Alexis, there were also signs that he was frustrated at not being adequately paid for his work. This perception of unfairness may have contributed to his anger and resentment. Learning from the Washington Navy Yard tragedy means taking into account all of these factors, safety, mental health, discrimination, and injustice. Only by addressing all of these issues can we work to prevent future tragedies. In our next section, we will continue to explore society's responses to this event and discuss more about how we can learn from this tragedy to create a safer and more understanding future. We'll dive deeper into these questions in the next part of our series. The impact of the Washington Navy Yard massacre spread beyond the borders of the military installation and reverberated across the country, sparking debates and discussions about security, mental health, discrimination and justice. The fact that Alexis, despite his record, was able to buy a gun and enter a secure military facility was a wake-up call for the entire country. An intensive review of security policies and procedures occurred, both at military installations and at private contractors. The tragedy highlighted the need for more thorough and rigorous background checks and to take into account not only criminal offenses, but also mental health issues and violent behavior. The massacre also highlighted the need for better access to and management of mental health care. Despite reports that Alexis suffered from PTSD and had shown signs of violent and erratic behavior, he did not receive adequate help for these issues. This tragedy served to highlight the deficiencies of our system in the treatment of mental health and in the prevention of violence related to it. In response to the massacre, many mental health organizations and professionals called for improved mental health services, including greater access to therapy, earlier detection of mental illness, and better public education about the signs and symptoms. Symptoms of mental health problems. However, improving security in mental health care is not enough to prevent tragedies like the one at the Washington Navy Yard. We must also address the issues of discrimination and injustice. Alexis often complained of being discriminated against, and this feeling of being treated unfairly may have fueled his anger and resentment. This leads us to reflect on how we can build a more just and inclusive society, where people do not feel marginalized or discriminated against. This means fostering tolerance and understanding, and making sure that all people are treated with respect and fairness. The Washington Navy Yard massacre was a tragedy that left us all shocked and grieved. But it was also a call to action, an opportunity to learn and grow. As we remember the victims of this terrible tragedy, we must strive to build a world where events like this do not happen again. In the wake of the massacre at the Washington Navy Yard, the nation found itself in deep introspection. This event shook society as a whole, 
leading to scrutiny and changes in security policies and procedures at military installations and private contractors, increased attention to mental health, and the need to address issues of discrimination and injustice. But what have we learned from the tragedy at the Washington Navy Yard? How can we prevent future acts of mass violence? One important lesson is the need for greater transparency and accountability in our security systems. A person with a history of violence and mental health problems cannot be allowed access to a firearm or a secure military installation. We must improve our background checks and ensure that private contractors follow the same rigorous standards as the military itself. Another lesson is the importance of mental health. Aaron Alexis was a man who clearly needed help, but he didn't get it. We must improve access to mental health care, especially for those in high-pressure positions or in military institutions. And we must work to remove the stigma associated with seeking help for mental health issues. Finally, we cannot ignore the role of discrimination and injustice in creating resentment and anger. We need to work to create a more inclusive and just society, where everyone is treated with respect and fairness. The Washington Navy Yard Massacre is a blot on our history, a reminder of what can happen when warning signs are ignored and when people who need help don't get it. But it is also an opportunity to learn, to grow, and to improve. As we remember the victims of this tragedy, we must strive not only to honor their memory, but also to learn from their loss. With this reflection we conclude our series on the massacre at the Washington Navy Yard. Thank you for joining us on this journey and we hope it has been both enlightening and moving. Next time, we will tackle another story in La Criminotica. Until then, please stay safe and continue to search for the truth.